is this a code violation or not? If you were on a job and you go behind your helper to double check his work and you pull a wire nut off and you find these two wires underneath it not pre-twisted together, chances are you're going to be pissed and make him redo it. But is it a code violation? Now, whether or not it's a code violation, we could argue that it's best practice to twist your wires together before putting the wire nut on there to make a good joint and a good connection because loose connections are a hazard and because you want to eliminate the possibility of having to do more troubleshooting at the end of the job, you want to have good joint. Now take a look at this photo from the National Electrical Code. B says, listed or labeled equipment shall be installed and used in accordance with any instructions included in the listing or labeling. And you're probably familiar with this little bag of commercial electric wire nuts that you could buy at Home Depot. Now let's take a look at the back where we can see the instructions that are on this label. Number five, pre-twisting is acceptable, but not required. So you can see that based on the label instructions, pre-twisting is not required when you install these wire nuts. I mean, look at the photo there. But we can probably all agree that it is best practice to make good joints and pre-twist your wires. And if you have any reasons why you would not do that, or if you're one of the guys who doesn't do that, I would uh, like to hear your reasoning in the comments. But I'll share with you a real experience that I had. I was working, and as you know, the, tire, the more uh, fatigued the guys get throughout the day, the sloppier they can get or complacent that they can get, and especially toward the end of a job when circuits are being turned on and lighting is on and all sorts of stuff like that. You're getting ready to uh, finish up trimming out fixtures and devices and get out of there. Well, I was working on a junction box that was part of some lighting circuits. It was 277 volts, and I was busting open a junction box like this, and it was a three-story building, and the electrical rooms were far away, often locked because of the power that was now on in parts of the building, and I didn't have a key. I didn't feel like running back and forth between it, so I figured I'd be careful and I'd work on this circuit while it was energized. I knew it was energized. And I started busting this junction box apart, and this set of wires are twisted together on the end. This one is not. Now, as I pull this wire nut off, these wires stay together. There's no change. However, the box I was working in at the job was containing joints made like this one. And so, me being a little sloppy and in a hurry, I just start twisting this thing off, and I'm gonna slow down here for you so that you could see, but as I start to remove this wire nut, you'll see that these wires start to come apart. And somehow, either them coming apart and smacking the side of my finger here, it seemed to me at the time that a wire somehow popped out of this wire nut and stag, uh, tagged me right in the finger before I was done with the rest of them. It was probably shorter a little bit than the others. And so as I was pulling this joint off, this one popped out and hit me in the finger. And I got 277 volts. So I twist mine together, but as you'll see in this video, with the code photo and the photo of the label of the wire nuts, it's not actually a code violation to make sucky uh, joints like this. Um, apparently the wire nuts are made in a way that by installing them they would twist the wires together to some extent. So, hope you like this video. Share your experiences if you have any similar ones with us. Hi, I'm Michael Irwin and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like the content, then subscribe and share the video with somebody else. I've got two coming out soon and the links to those will be in the description below when I upload them. I'm going to teach you how to make more money as an electrician and if you're on the customer end of things, I'm going to teach you how to save money when you have to hire an electrician so that you get the best bang for your buck and quality service. Thanks.